I know it may seem odd to be at a funeral home and hear the term, good morning. But those of you who know me know I begin whatever life celebration I'm privileged to be a part of with a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good whatever. Because if we don't stop and realize that it's good and great that we gather together under God's grace to celebrate one of his amazing children, then this is just something you kind of go through when somebody dies and it doesn't mean anything. These are just some pots and pans and an iron that have nothing to do with the hands that held them, the hands that used them, the hands that did all the good things that they do and will continue to do through all of us. So who here now thinks it's a good morning? There we go. To all of you uh, watching virtually, we appreciate your love and support. And we would ask that wherever you are in the world, if you just kind of put your noisy things aside and just focus on uh, being in this place like you were physically here, we find that you'll get much more out of this time and space. And also for those uh, who couldn't be with us today, I know we have some family and friends, a lot of teachers uh, who were unable to be here because obviously it's the middle of school day. Um, all the ceremonies today in about a week or so's time are going to be put together into a beautiful uh, tribute film that will be available on the Wright and Ford Family Funeral Home website and it'll be up there in perpetuity and you can watch the ceremonies at any time now or in the future. Um, so we're going to do a couple things today and I'm going to ask you to stay very present in the mode you're at. Don't worry about how are we getting to the cemetery or Where's the coffee? Don't worry about that. Just stay in this moment now. And I know we have a lot of different um, races and religions and all the things that Evelina loved about humans in one room. So I always tell everybody, no matter the type of religion or clergy. Just listen to the words. Don't turn it off because that's not your religion or your faith. Just listen because if we go back, we can find something that grounds us all. This woman found the common thread that made the human tapestry. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. So, you know, it's not often uh, in today's society where we can have um, a clergy present because look, being born, raised, and died in the same town, that's over. Those people are 90 plus years old. But the fact that we have somebody uh, who knew her for many years, careful, I don't want to give away his age. He was a young, young man at that time. Young, very young, very young. But to have someone who knew her and understand the struggles, the hardships, but the heart and the beauty and the grace and the wisdom to be able to lead us in prayer and celebration is a beautiful thing. So in a moment, uh, Reverend Wilson is going to come forward and share with us his thoughts. But I'm going to ask you all to do something now as um, children of a good and loving creator. Just close your eyes. Remember, I'm looking. I can see if they're not. <laughs> close your eyes. And I want you to think of Evelina. I want you to smell her cooking. I want you to see that smile. Hear that laugh, hear those instructions she gave you when she was right. And I want you to think about the beauty that was, is, and always will be as we celebrate this life of Evelina Victoria. Pastor. Good morning. Uh, I am here this morning because I am a product of the faith of the ancestors that are represented here in this room. Soy, soy producto de, de la fe de, de los eh, antepasados que están, que están representados en este cuarto en esta mañana. Uh, he said, I knew her. No, she knew me. Amen. I was born 
I, I was literally born uh, in the arms of these women, Amanda, Casilda, Elvira, all of these people, Carlos Anderson is my godfather, Eva Anderson is my godmother. I remember these women singing, my God, what, what, what a voice they had. And our family, and, and I want to establish this this morning, our family was grounded in Christ. In, in Christ. Nothing else. You know, our family, nuestra familia, estaba en anclada en Cristo Jesús. Y yo soy producto de esa fe. Y eso es lo que me trae aquí. That is what brings me here this morning. I had to be here. Thank you for the honor that you guys give me 64 years later to come and eulogize this great woman. Amanda and my family left Cuba the same day on the same airplane. We landed in Miami the same day, July the 6th, 1971. And, and in Miami, we split. We went to Brooklyn, and years later, we found out that she came to Elizabeth. So my roots, I belong here Amen. this morning. And I prayed about this service this morning, that the peace of God will reign in your hearts. And I, I am not going to be long this morning, but I want this moment to be unforgettable to all of us. And my prayer is that generations, your children, generations will proclaim Christ as the only God that our fathers gave to us. Por favor, no, no mezclen, no, no, no hagan mezcla extrañas. Nuestros, nuestros padres nos enseñaron una sola cosa, Cristo Jesús. Y mi, mi sueño en esta mañana es que nuestras generaciones conozcan a Cristo Jesús como el único y exclusivo Salvador. Si, si logro eso en esta mañana, mi tiempo con ustedes no ha sido en vano. Eight years ago, I, I, I sat where you were sitting. Watching my mother, what you were seeing today is what I saw. You, you know what gave me peace? That I, as I was sitting there, I looked at her and I said, I gave her everything she wanted. The greatest reward in times like these is no regret. No tener nada de que quejarte. We gave our mother everything she wanted. She was a queen. And this morning, if you could sit there and look and say, and I know you did, we gave her everything she wanted. That's the peace that's going to carry you. Because it doesn't go away. I told you, right, when, when I walked in, it doesn't go away. It does not go away. You're going to cry over her forever. Things, things she did, that, that yeah. birthday morning call. Yeah. Things along the way. Yeah. But, but you have that peace yeah. that, that I gave her everything yeah. she wanted. So this morning, I wanted to rest. Descansing in esta mañana. In the knowledge. A, she's, she's at home. No, no more suffering. But D, 
you have no regrets. And I say to the audience this morning, if you still have a mother, if, if you still have a father, honor them. Because you don't want to come to this moment with regret. People cry at funerals for different reasons. And there, there's a cry that I never want to hear. The cry of regret. Because that one never goes away. It's, it's painful. So si aún tienes tus padres vivos, honralos. Amalos, respetalo. Because that, that, that is the greatest legacy that you could ever have in times like these. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. And how can we find a way to say thank you in times like these? But you are God. And you have spoken. In your divine will, you have called Evelina home. And our hearts are broken. I pray for your peace and for your comfort this morning, for your strength. Help us who are still alive and remain to reconsider, to think about our own mortality. Let this be a day of recommissioning our lives to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're, we're going to sing one of her favorites this morning. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask my singers. I have some singers this morning <laughs> that, that are going to come and they're, they're going to sing one of their favorites. Amen. Come on, Anderson. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 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 Y que sea pasada lista llegue a estar. Cuando allá se pase lista, cuando allá se pase lista, cuando allá se pase lista, a su nombre yo feliz responderé. Trabajemos por el maestro desde el arpa disfruta. Siempre hablemos de su amor y fiel bondad. Cuando todo aquí parezca y nuestra obra se sella y que sea pasada lista llegue a estar. Cuando allá se pase lista. Cuando allá se pase lista, cuando allá se pase lista, a mi nombre yo feliz responderé. Cuando allá se pase lista, cuando allá se pase lista, cuando allá se pase lista, a mi nombre yo feliz responderé.
Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Oh. I'm gonna keep it a little bit more lighthearted, lighthearted, because that was my mother as well. Um, I was remembering through this whole process. Um, we used to take a lot of car rides places, me, my sister, my mom, and uh, my sister and my mother would get lost back then. There was no GPS. There was none of that stuff. And my sister would be knocked out in the back seat, sleep. <sighs> and I wouldn't go to sleep until we found the road that we had to be on or the destination. And now, She's on a road, you know. But the difference is, is she's in the car with my grandma, yes. my cousin George, my Aunt Elsie. <laughs> and um, they're all clowning us right now, <laughs> seeing, us, seeing us out here just, you know, tearing up and whatever have you. So she'll find her way. That's pretty much it. That's all I got, people. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. To God be the glory. On um, behalf of my family, I would like to thank the Wright and Ford Family Funeral Home, especially DJ Wright. There are no words that could ever express the amount of gratitude that we have for all your help and support during this difficult process. Thank you. And to my endless list of friends and family, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. This story may be familiar um, to some. You m may have heard it before. Um, my mother was born on May 8, 1945. So that day was known as VE Day, or Victory in Europe Day, the end of World War II. When my mother was born, she was named Evelina after a woman who lived in town, and my grandmother liked the name. However, for a middle name, my grandmother took the advice of another neighbor and named her Evelina Victoria. And thus, Evelina Victoria Anderson came into the world. My mother was always known to love her family, but one thing I wanna make clear is that my mother not only loved her family, but she also loved herself immensely. She had a sense of pride in who she was and did not care what others thought of her. Lime green sweater, <laughs> black and red plaid pants, purple shoes, she's gonna wear it. She's gonna wear the hell out of that outfit. She also knew the value that she offered this world. So at a time when there were so many odds stacked against her, black, dark skin, foreigner, English language learner, woman, single parent, inner city, she turned all of those strikes that were against her into her best qualities sister, mother, friend, grandmother, daughter, teacher, homeowner, champion. She loved herself enough that she knew that raising two children on her own required more finances and education. So next to Christianity, education was the other religion in our house. When my mother was taking classes at night for her certifications, 
she would come home tired and would be typing papers for school with a Spanish-English dictionary on one side and a notebook on another to correct spelling mistakes. And even though my mother struggled with the language, it did not stop her from obtaining a bachelor's degree from Montclair State University. She sought employment and was hired as a Newark public school teacher. She taught Spanish-speaking bilingual newcomers with disabilities when at the time, the students of the lowest abilities were often being put in the far corners of the schools, in basement floors, in subfloors in so many school districts. But my mother gave 150%, 150% of the time, often staying up late on Sundays to prep for the week, making exemplars and anchor charts. Her career move into education doubled her salary which allowed her to make several renovations to our home and provided us with such wonderful vacation experiences and really awesome dinners and trips to NYC. Baller. <laughs> <laughs> when my mother had her first stroke during the pandemic and our wedding was up in the air and the future was uncertain, my mother was so weak from the effects of the TIA of the stroke, the doctors told her she would have to go to rehab. Since I could only FaceTime with her, she was so scared and began to cry. She said, but Evelina, I'm scared, and I can't walk, and I want to go home. And I said, don't be scared. You're a servant of the Lord. You're a general in his army. You pick up your sword and shield and you prepare for battle and you fight. Your mother named you Evelina Victoria because you always win. Months later, my mother was dancing with me at our wedding. Hashtag winning. <laughs> when my mother saw that her son Marcelino was making career moves, had a family, helped maintain her home. Her granddaughter Madison had a clear vision carried by the torch of education that my mother passed on to her as she finishes her college career at St. Peter's. And that her daughter learned the greatest gift of all is that to love yourself is the greatest gift you could give. She saw me walk down the aisle into the arms of the man I love and loves her back unconditionally. And she told me, God is great. I had no idea I would have a daughter as incredible as you. That's game. <laughs> and then finally, when she transitioned from this world to life everlasting with the Lord, and the promise that we'll see her again in her youth, in her beauty, in all her glory. Congratulations, Mommy. You won again. <laughs> Mr. Spain, your class is now dismissed. Hi, um, I'm not gonna say a lot on here, but um, I've never done this before, and honestly, I never thought I would be doing, I, I would be here doing this today. But every wonderful story needs to come to an end. But I don't want to call this story an end, but a new chapter of life, where we continue where you left off, and where we shall begin. You have shown us that regardless of the storm that takes place, or the battle that we may have to fight. We will stay resilient. We must stay strong and hold our faith in God, and we shall prevail regardless of the task put in front of us. You always told me God gave his hardest task to his strongest warriors, and today is definitely one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, which is saying goodbye to you, but I know that you will forever live on in your children, in your grandchildren, and in the hearts of everyone you've touched. I believe we warriors 
that stand in front of you today can continue to march on another day holding the tools you have left us behind. So for that, Mommy, I thank you, and I love you to the moon and back. Psalms 103, verses 15 to 18. It says, as for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness, the children of children. This morning, as I close, at some point or another, we have heard, all heard the saying, life is fragile. It does not matter how strong how great, how lavish, how well you may consider yourself to be, the reality is that life is fragile. So fragile that it can change from one moment to the other. The Bible says in a twinkling of an eye, life can change. Psalms 103, as I paraphrase it, it says that the days of our lives is like the grass. It grows, the flower comes out, then the wind passes over it, and it is gone. He says it is gone as if it never existed. All of us this morning, in our individual journeys, and I'm reading because I want to expedite my time. All of us this morning under the sound of my voice in our individual journey are flourishing and at the same time we are passing. Everybody under the sound of my voice, we are passing. The time of our lives, five minutes ago when I came up here, we have all lost five minutes of life. The Bible says that it is appointed unto man. In life, you can miss a lot of appointments, but there is one day that is not moving. There, there is an appointed time for us to die, to expire. That date is not moving. Everyone, every, if, if, if it's one thing I'm sure of this morning, is that everybody under the sound of my voice is going to pass. The wind is going to blow. And like the grass, like the flower, we are going to cease to exist. Death is the oldest reality of the human experience. In most cases, it comes unexpected and leaves us in shock, grief, and sadness. The human spirit cannot confront this moment without the help of God. And that's what I want to impress upon you this morning. This is hard. I, I, I heard her say that this morning. This is so hard. Because the human spirit cannot grasp the reality that someone I love is gone.
We could only do it with the help of God. Amen. Evelina was loved by so many. Look around this room this morning. And everyone who is here, somehow or another, was touched by her life. Her departure has left us with a sense of loss. That's the reality. Today I pray that our hearts can be filled with hope. Hope. We, we need to walk out of here today and continue to live. To live. Because every one of us, the clock is ticking on every one of us. So this morning, I want to ask you a question. How are you doing? How, how are you doing? How, how are you preparing for your day? Because we all have a day. And, and I would be so reckless this morning in, in my duty as a pastor if I don't remind you that we, that, that, that we all need to do better, given the fact that we, are, that we are going to meet God one day, you have to stop and consider how you're living. H how are you doing? Considering that we don't know when he's going to call us. We don't know. In the last two years, I have done more funerals than weddings. In some cases, people that were here today are gone tomorrow. We need to ask our, ourselves this morning. How am I doing? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep. And, and I don't want you to worry about them as those that have no hope. In our faith, we believe that we're going to see her again. And, and that is the hope that we need to walk. This is not goodbye. This is farewell. I'll see you later. I, I, you know, we, we're going to see each other again. But then Paul flips the script and, and then he talks to those of us who remain. We are going to go to the cemetery in, in, in just a few moments. And we are going to plant her in the ground like a seed. A seed that is going to germinate. Do not walk away from the cemetery as if you're never going to see her again. But walk away with the hope that this is temporary. Amen. There is more concern this morning. Not for her. She's okay. And if she could send you a message this morning, the message would be, don't cry for me. Amen. Don't cry for me. No Jordan for me. The greatest concern this morning is for us. For us. How are you doing this morning? I pray that this, this moment, this moment, this is the closest you could ever get to eternity. When, when you are standing here this morning, sitting in this room this morning, and I spoke to Evelina over the phone. Evelina, I said, Evelina, everybody in that room is, is going to be thinking about their own death, your own mortality. We are headed somewhere. The clock is ticking on us, and we don't know. 
when the time is going to be. So, so while we are alive and remain, let's love one another. Let's, let's rid our hearts of grudges and unforgiveness. Let's love our neighbor. And most of all, love God. Above all things. May, may the hope of Christ fill our hearts and give us the courage to make peace with God. And that the life that remains ahead of us, we may live it in a manner that is pleasing to God. That we too may confront this reality in peace with God. Pray to, to the family this morning. Continue to hold each other. Continue to love one another. Stay together. And may the peace of God flood your hearts. A life of no regret. Teach, to, teach it to your children. Because that's, that's what they gave us. And we got to make sure that we pass it down generations to come. Thank you for the honor that you guys gave me this morning. to be a part of this, your moment. I remember years ago, I was at a funeral and we was at the graveyard. Funeral director, we, 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 we were about to lower the casket. And off in the distance, I heard a voice. A young lady came running, said, don't put her down yet, don't put her down yet. I looked around to the family and I said, who is she? She said, that's her daughter. She hasn't called mom in years. She said, pastor, don't listen to her. Put it down. I said, well, someone needs to control her so she don't make a scene. She came all the way up to the gravesite and started screaming. Screaming, open it up, I need to see her. Open her up, I need to see her. I looked around and said, push her, push her in the grave. Because sometimes in times like these, we do things, we want to do things that we have not done in life. And the time to love is while we are still breathing. And sometimes you simply need to pick up the phone and say, I didn't call because I wanted anything. I just called to say, I love you. And that's going to help us to come to this place in peace. When, when we have to stand at this juncture in life and say I gave her everything she wanted. I bless every one of you this morning. I bless your family. I bless your children. And I pray that as the clock ticks away in every one of our lives that we can arrive to this moment in peace saying I did everything that I came to earth to do. Finish well. Finish strong. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bow your heads and let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, once again I want to say thank you. Thank you for Evelina. This gift that you gave us, you gave this family a gift. Thank you for all that she imparted to us in her lifetime. 
I pray that none of it is going to be wasted. I pray for every family represented in this room. There are concerns, there, are, there is sickness, and, and there are so many things that keep us awake at night. I pray that your peace may rest and abide in every heart. Help us to rest in you, knowing that our lives are in your control. I bless you this morning and may the hope that only comes from you rest and abide with every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Pastor, for your beautiful words. I couldn't help but uh, think of the poet Pablo Neruda, who I'm sure Mom read. And he wrote once, You can cut all the flowers, but you can't stop spring from coming. All too often when we stand before somebody we love, we think it's, it's cut, it's over. Spring will come again. You just have to let your heart see it. And knowing young Evelina for all these years, and obviously knowing her family as, as time has moved on, of course her mother as well, I know she all gave you the ability to see that. But she also instilled in you choices. She let you choose what you want to do and how you want to be. Because she believed that you would make smart, intelligent decisions guided by a good and loving God. So, as you leave here today, as Pastor said, look for the spring. Look for the spring. You will see it. And Pastor, you and I didn't plan our remarks, but I was going to end today with something that those of you in the camera can't see, so I will bring it over. Something I had made for my friend to take home. And on the bottom, besides that cross full of pictures and life and legacy, there's a quote on the bottom from Corinthians. And if I could use it for every family I serve, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have to say half the things you just said. <laughs> it wouldn't happen. And normally you hear these at weddings. I don't remember if this was at your wedding or not, if it was said, but regardless. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Faith in your own way. And I don't care what religion you are, Jewish, Catholic, Muslim, Buddhist, doesn't matter. If you get down to the heart of it all, they're all, everybody's saying the same thing. Yeah. Respect, honor, love. We all try to find the differences and make Enemies, that's our own fault. She saw past all that. Her faith guided her. But all those young Jewish students, all those young Catholic students, all those young Muslim students, all those students who couldn't find anything at that point, she still pushed them to find it for themselves. How beautiful was that? She had hope that you spoke about, Pastor, in that brighter tomorrow. And the reason... I'm not worried about you guys is because everything she did every time she spoke to me it was all grounded in pure genuine compassionate love yes. Yes. plain and simple she knew the hard stuff she drove through it yeah. and she saw that love and she lived her life with love and she concluded her physical time on this earth with love and it's love that is going to allow us to bring our sister to her place of rest I'm going to ask you now all to again close your eyes and just come to that peace in your hearts think of Evelina again think of that smile think of them funky outfits 
Think of her heart, which loved her Lord so deeply. And think of ways that you're going to honor her and be more like her and make this world a better place as you come forward to say you're physical. See you later. Until we're all reunited in that place where there's no pain, no suffering, but only light, only peace, and only hope. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised in incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this perishable nature must put on imperishable, and this mortal nature must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? Thank be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let not your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And there we shall forever be with the Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord of life and death, we acknowledge the reality of death. Although it separates loved ones, make us aware it is only for a season. Although it brings grief, may we look to thy spirit to bring comfort and peace to thee who mourn. Although it brings disappointment, give us faith to look to the future with hope and confidence and courage. Now, O oh Father, I bow with these, our friends, through the coming days, and bring us all together again around thy throne in eternal glory. This I pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, God, I commit this body to the ground. We trust her into your hand to await the resurrection of the dead. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I challenge friends to please continue praying for the family. Do not make the call. Call them. Do not walk away from them after the day. Stay with them because they are going to need you on tomorrow more than today. So I challenge you, please stay with the family. Carry them in your prayers. Thank you, sir. Let's give this man a big round of applause. Thank you, I love you guys. Love you guys. God bless you all. Thank you for that, Pastor. And uh, the old saying, it takes a village. It truly does. And what I was, again, you and I should take this show on the road. Because what I was going to say was, don't send an email. Pick up a phone. I know some of you don't know what a pen is, but it looks like this. Some of you young folk. It's paper. I know us old folk have it. That's where we write things down.
I want you all and I challenge you all. I know you have, you have mommy stories. I know you do. I want you to write them down and I want you to drop them in the mail to these kids because how great would it be when they're having a trouble day and they go out to the mailbox and they have a letter thinking about how she touched your heart and you were just thinking about her. Because as Pastor said, we're all going to be sitting in these seats one day for somebody we love. How would we want to be treated with the roles reversed? So the one thing I do uh, for many of my families, and as you leave my funeral home in Flemington, there's a big sign before you get out on the road that says, happiness not in another place but this place, not for another hour but this hour. When people who don't know me come for the first time to make arrangements or something, they, or they're just driving through, they're like, this is a funeral home. What kind of happiness do you got going on here? But if this event doesn't remind you that now is the time to live, I don't know what will. So we hope that every time you all wrap yourselves up in your mother, you remember that now is the time and now is the place. And this cross which rests with her since I brought her into my care that day, lean on it, be strong. God's shoulders are there for a reason, they're broad for a reason because all his children lean on him. Don't be afraid to do that. Something else that I talked to the family about, and I'm going to say it because all of you are going to be like, wow, he's cheap, he's taking the casket apart. It's not what we're going to do. Most of you didn't get a chance because there were so many beautiful flowers at the funeral home, but if you look at the four corners, they each represent our three speakers today who were so kind to honor their mother and grandmother. Evelina chose the rose. That red rose that signifies so much, that signifies that faith, that hope, and that love that we find in Corinthians. May you know only that hope, and may you continue to teach that love to all those generations that you're doing. Where's that? There he is, that handsome young man. Mama's pride and joy, or baby boy. I wasn't shocked when he selected Mama. With all those beautiful flowers, those bright colors in their own way, and I know some of you are saying, it's gold and white, how can it be bright colors? I see those bright colors, because I know he does. And I know he sees what that word really means going to be hard as you walk through that house and you still hear her calling you. Still hear her telling you what to do. You still knowing that she right. But listen for her. She'll tell you what to do. Where's Matt? There she is. You didn't get out of this one. So, not whatever I expected when she looked through this book of a thousand things I have. And for someone so young, compared to me who has gray eyebrows, this one, I think, has probably the most wisdom. And I am, I better get invited to all the awards you're going to receive and all these, t you just better bring me there. Because she was deep enough in her thought during a moment of crisis to pick going home. Someone who just went through what she did at that age, losing someone so close, to have the fortitude of that faith 
to know where she is. If that doesn't say there's hope for the next generation, I don't know what does. So Madison, remember, she's going home, but she's there. But she's also right here in your heart. And never forget that. Again, ladies and gentlemen, a, a special thanks to Pastor and to, to everybody. There's a countless number of people that take forever to thank and just know that uh, the family knows and truly does appreciate all of your love and support. All the little things that you have done have not skipped over their heads. Uh, I know they'll be reaching out over time, uh, but they also need you to reach out. Too many people, oh, I don't want, I don't want to bring it up because it's going to make them depressed. No, it's not. They don't know how to talk about it to you because they don't want to seem like they're bringing the mood down all the time. Talk about her as the household name that she always was and still is. Do not be afraid. Do not let your hearts be troubled and neither let them be afraid. For all of you watching, same thing. I expect notes you can email too. It's okay. But I expect you all to reach out to this family to let them know that you watched today's services, that you were here for them in prayer, and that you'll still be there. It does make a difference.
Tu 